Welcome to your freshman year at the Tragedy Academy, where you are the teacher and we are the students. And together, we will learn from past tragedy to lay the foundation for a better humanity. The only supplies you'll need, an open mind and a sense of humor. So, tilt that chair back, dock at a turn, and never raise your hand. Because this is the Tragedy Academy, and class is in session. Now I'm pure scholar. All right. I got my paper like an old man here. Oh, I've got I feel papers. so analog. <laughs> I feel so analog. Um, welcome to the Tragedy Academy, a show created to bridge societal divides in a judgment-free zone using candor and humor. My name is Jay, and today I am joined by special guest, Nilu. How are you doing today, Nilu? I am fantastic. So grateful to be alive. Thank you for having me. You know, I say that oh, it's a good day to be on this side of the dirt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way I, yeah. that's how I approach it. Although if I could be on the other side of the dirt as well, and then come back to this side whenever I wanted to, that'd be cool. I mean, that'd be neat. Oh, oh I, you mean like, yeah. oh, yes, I love it. See, but remember, it says tragedy in the name. We're okay with it. So exactly. if your phone's going off in the background. You I'm... know what's weird is I turned off all my notifications just to avoid that. But apparently... And it has, it's a good reason. Maybe this brings up a really nice point. So I set up an alarm for a welfare check for a lady that I know who is an elder. And she expressed concerns to me through animal rescue means that she was afraid that she would die one day and her cat would not have any safe place to go. So I set up that alarm <laughs> three days a week to just text her and just check in on her. So... <laughs> It's a oh good my reason, God. unfortunately. That's, that is a great reason. And <laughs> and it's funny. She she thinks it's for the cat. That's so right. uh, what a selfless person. But yeah. I mean, obviously it's not. Her for cat, the cat, yeah, her cat's cat. name is Motor. He's an orange tabby and he's 16 with some medical conditions. So so shout out to Motor and Nancy. And uh, I hope that they are doing well today because that's my welfare check reminder. <laughs> Get it. What a great name, Motor. But I don't see it as a welfare check. I said that because, you know, that's a really easy word. I, I She's my friend now, so I, I, you know, I send love to her. Yeah, I'm used to the term health and welfare checks. I've, I they think that's uh, when I did, like, military work and stuff. I was, yeah, oh, for and sure, check. yeah. But I get it. And and the, the premise is, it's funny. Um, I say it's funny a lot, but I had put a group of friends on a uh, text after something had happened a long time ago for that exact reason. They were friends that didn't know each other so that there could be periodic welfare checks on each other, even though they didn't know each other. So there was right. a, there was a supplemental friend. I don't know an extra friend, a friend of a friend that you knew you could trust. Right. So something like that. The welfare checks are important, man. We have to ask each other how we're doing. Right. And it doesn't happen enough. It really doesn't happen enough. That sense of community. Um, that's what we are. Um, my collective and my friends and whoever I talk to, I really try to send, uh, send that positive message of community that, hey, I am someone that I feel you can count on if you need, because I don't feel like we, we often know or know how to ask. Um, of people, whether we can, you know, like whether they can look out for us, if that's an okay thing. Like, hey, yeah, that's an understatement. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. So uh, I practice that with my with my community, whoever I'm in touch with, really. Yeah, it, it really means something to people. And, and it's not even um, you don't have to do anything out of the ordinary. You don't have to, like, I'll, <laughs> I'll send pictures of my feet to my friends while I'm on the toilet and say, what's up? <laughs> I got some free time. <laughs> All right, that's 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 a level of intimacy I have not reached with most of my friends. So I'm gonna have what? to. I'm gonna. You haven't, that. you haven't seen toilet pe feet pics to anybody? No, maybe pictures of cats that like are approach me while I'm in the bathroom, but not of myself. <laughs> That's funny. You don't send like those beach feet pictures to your friends. That's amazing. I'm them. gonna have to start. I'm gonna have to start. You have to. I have to. Well, actually, Eric and I, my uh, my old co-host, he um, he and I had talked about doing a TikTok bit where we would utilize feet in front of the toilet as a way to talk about hard topics in like text threads and then set them to music or whatever they might be wow. so like two dudes talking on the toilet but all you see is their feet and then somebody else will jump in then maybe a female <laughs> foot and maybe a dog's foot you know because they're visiting in the bathroom and then back out you know just just to try to see if everybody's okay nice. open that dialogue because it's really no big fucking deal <laughs> it's funny you don't want to, you don't you don't want to send pictures to your friends. I don't. Your well, I, I I never thought about it. So maybe now I'll have to venture. You're gonna do it. I'm gonna do it probably. 
For, yeah. <laughs> there's no probably no, there's about de- it. There's a definitely in there. You know, I will do it. I will do it. I will. Well, you're a comedian. See, we haven't even talked about all these great accomplishments you have. You mean, right. you've been in documentaries. You've been, you're a comedian. You've been in the major. Like, what was your favorite place to do comedy? Wow. Okay. So my favorite set was from the comedy store. But unfortunately, the comedy store has a policy where you cannot video or take pictures of your set. Um, or even put it anywhere online, like even if you happen to do it illegally, like they'll blacklist you. So I haven't ever been able to share that set. But my favorite oh, wow. place to do it, because I was able to just be myself and produce my own show, that would be at the Dirty Beatles um, off of Jefferson in Los Angeles. And uh, that's, they ask, it's a it's a kind of an art and music collective, um, kind of a Burning Man themed uh, theme camp. And um, they are fantastic. So they just through all the late night raves that I was going to for a while and the underground parties, um, which we can get to, um, they we met. It's a core group of people that runs that collective and um, the Dirty Beatles. And they, they asked me to produce my own monthly comedy show there once they, they I, saw a couple of shows. I make Wednesdays. See, that that, um, that you I keep getting hung up when you say Dirty Beatles over and over again. Like, <laughs> the Dirty I'm, Beatles. I'm, I'm the Dirty Beatles. And I'm like, man, all the mental pictures. <laughs> of the Beatles doing just dis- just disgusting or stupid That's things funny. just started running through my head. That's a fabulous name. Okay, you want to see where perceptions vary? I did not all of these years think about the actual <laughs> Beatles, the musical group, when thinking about this Burning Man theme camp. That's hilarious. Right? Now you're going to be like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's all I'm going to think about now. Wow. <laughs> I, would, yeah. I don't know if I, that it was It's all their, about perspective. Yeah, I don't know if that was their inspiration. I think we did end up talking about what their inspiration for the name was, but I, I don't actually uh, remember. But shout out to the Beatles, man. I, I'm going to post this on their uh, Facebook page and Instagram Talking page. about an enlightened bunch of dudes. Those guys knew a lot before we did. Yep. Yeah. I could, it, it, artists. <laughs> it's funny how I, I think through time we've seen a lot of people that have had such enlightened viewpoints of of everything in the world yeah but i feel like they didn't even know they had it right well it's that to an extent unaware i don't think that everybody knows yeah unaware awareness yeah i think it's that collective mindset kind of thing right you tap into something and you just go with the flow instead of resisting it and making it a more painful experience which is what a lot of human experience becomes because we tend to make everything more complex than it needs to be needs to be um who was it I'm quoting again. I'm always, you know, kind of just misquoting people, I think. But I think it was... I do it all the time. They're used to it. Yeah, exactly. I think it might have been Einstein again who said the the true sign of intelligence is taking something complex and making it simple. It's Einstein. Yes. Einstein, right? Yeah, it is Einstein. I mean, imagine that if we could just simplify every act or every choice down to the simple thing called love like whatever that meaning is in that moment whether it's love for your human fellow or your animal species or the planet or just love of giving or love of laughing or whatever love of meditation it's it's not like over time we haven't been told this right like even the it's funny the religions are the ones that fight against each other the most yet they're both saying the same god blessed thing in each instance be cool to each other love each other yeah don't be an asshole yep. that's what they all say i mean it's pretty simple exactly yeah yet they continue to do it yeah we just so, make everything so complex because we love suffering because everything else feels so mundane ah uh, see you brought up something i love that we love suffering and i i have a my thought behind that is that the reason why we love suffering is because without it, we have to express gratitude. And to express gratitude means that we have to walk the walk and move on with our life. And we can't sit and just make everything everybody else's fault. True. Uh, it's, the, it's the gateway to gratitude. Yeah. Once you're grateful, you have no choice but to keep moving the other direction. Right. It, it's, it just makes life easier right exactly it just i don't know how to describe that yeah and i was just doing a little deep thinking before we started this amazing podcast and i was thinking wow you know it, it really is um time that gifts you this wisdom there's no way around it you know in my 20s i had you know a, a, sis- a sister who's older and her friends who were older than her even would always tell me, oh, you don't understand. You're so young. Like they, you know, they were in the thirties and forties and and they'd be like, you don't understand. You'll understand when you're older. And I would resent that so much. I was like, why are these people such snobs? Age means nothing. And now that I'm 42, I'm like, 
Yeah. Ah, yeah, see, I'm 44. I see. And <laughs> I do agree with you, and I don't agree with you. Oh, I like that, because, because everything I is think two-sided. That, yeah, I think that experience is the teacher, right? But the, the amount of experience that you gain is not defined by time. Right. I My think thought that there was are incomplete. people that are. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think that there's a group of, of people within that, a subset um, for each and every area that have a set of experiences that we can't even begin to wrap our heads around. It's actually the problem with empathy. We we assume that uh, that there's a, a blanket answer. I'm not saying you. Right. No, <laughs> um, I get it. But it, it's everybody. I say it all the time. Everybody's the sum of their own experiences at any given time. That's it. Yeah. Nothing more, nothing less. Yep. You can be racist one day and not the next. If you figured out that racism was bad on Wednesday, Thursday, you could not be racist. <laughs> yes. It's seriously true. Right. Like, people don't understand that. I mean, that's a that's a really, really far stretch. But if you've been, if you look at the mental inputs that we get from society and culture and, you know, that hereditary and genetic insanity that's plugged into our brains over time. Right. If you live in one spot around nothing but these types of people, how the hell else do you come out any other way? Yeah, you have. You, you really have very little choice. No, yeah. you don't. Absolutely don't. So I have a I have a question. Um, I I peeked at some of your sets. Oh, nice. Um, and well, first of all, I I love how authentic you are. I'm I'm an authentic junkie. Nice. Um, because the stuff that you say throws everybody off guard. <laughs> And, it, and that is that to me is, you know, is, is one of my favorite things. It is true. Because you're OK. So just a couple of things about yeah. you. Right. You're a vegan. Yes. Right. Um, you uh, <laughs> you I think you said polyamorous. Yes. Was one of the things that you were talking about, yes. which I found super interesting. Yeah. It's, um, that's a topic. That's a whole two hour podcast on its own. I mean, no, you're coming back. Okay, yes, so you know. I would love you're to. coming back because I'm, I'm super to. curious about this and not from the, you know, I'm not going to be honking a 90s horn. Ar, ar, tell me yeah. about how many, you know, all that kind of stupid stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's no. all not like that. It's not at all glamorous. No, and, it can't yeah. be. It can't be. But it sometimes There's, was. <laughs> of course it could because you have, you have minds involved in those things. Yes. <laughs> it's all about motives. Um, but in this set, you had um, you had said because you seem to be an, a very natural person, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the things I saw was that you have armpit hair. Mm -hmm. But you also told a joke about not shaving downstairs and there being a beard and bush. <laughs> you said that beard all men with a beard. <laughs> <laughs> I almost peed my pants. Can you tell us what that was about? What What is this theory behind this? Because I have a beard, and I was sitting there with my wife when I we were watching the set, and I looked over at her when you said it, and I just, hmm. Well, I was talking about how over time I realized I love guys with beards, you know? And uh, my partner, uh, my best friend who I touch, Mark, he uh, he has a, he had, had more of a full beard. It's now trimmed back a little bit. Um, he's cleaned up his act. But he used to have a really bushy beard. And um, so I came up, you know, with this joke one time when we were smoking weed and hanging out that, that you know, it's, it's, I think it's because there's there's a beard to bush camaraderie. It's like two little forest creatures meeting in the night, you know. <laughs> it's like two yeah. sad sides of Velcro finally getting a chance to rub together. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's a varying landscape, literally. Um, grooming for me is a, is a varying landscape based on need, necessity, and personal, you know, uh, See, I flavor. threw you under the bus when I said that. And I didn't say it for the shock value yeah. of the um oh, of the, of the natural view by the way oh no yeah. i i know that it shocks people right. which is hysterical yeah. because we're human beings yes and we're one way but we have this need to i don't know cut trim shave do all sorts of stuff to fit in with society yeah. well i think we try to limit our differences so we don't stand out like you said but also we have a deep shame about what nature gave us and we don't we don't really connect it to function for example crying right we have shamed a whole culture and and generations of men by telling them that it's wrong for them to cry and that real men don't cry we forgot that crying is a biological function and that you literally detox things out of your eye sockets when you, those tears come out. So not only are you now telling your body that it's incorrect and doesn't know what it's doing, but you're now refusing to allow your body to do a natural function like urinate, defecate, breathe, cough, sneeze. 
a pass gas. These are all natural functions that need to happen in order for you to function properly. So shame. shame it all comes us. down to that word. Shame yeah. is is a horrible, horrible learned uh, thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're you're describing it all one right on point. Um, it, it, it's those ingrained thought processes that we've been given that allow us to not be able to function like normal creatures. Everybody, right. nobody wants to say that we're animals. Oh, we're, we're so animals. animals. Yeah. We're animals that, yeah. that, that, that walk around and do math. That's well, about the only damn difference. And we were given the gift of choice and free will, which we have abused. You know, we've really taken this too far. Like, I can do it, so I'm going to do it. I think that's really gotten us in a lot of trouble. So I try to... Um, you know, that's not your mantra. If I can do it, just do it. (laughs) Yeah, no, uh, I wish that's, that's, yeah, that would be a, no, that's called a, that's called a sociopath or a psychopath. I think. Yeah. Very. You just feel like you can do whatever you want. Both of both categories of, of whom are, are very much misunderstood, by the way. I used to call any old person a psychopath and sociopath, just like if they may, if they were just like not fitting into some sort of construct. But I, I recently discovered that those are very intricate differences as well. Whole other podcast. <laughs> those ways to describe the mental illnesses or constructs that we have are very they're they're fascinating yeah. because it's it's like everybody's standing around ahead and talking about the view that they have and they don't without looking at any other direction from it and nobody's looking at the the whole head they're right. not looking top down they're all looking from the sides because right. these are all they're not they're not diseases or illnesses they're symptoms exactly dude ocd is a symptom adhd is a symptom bipolar is a symptom they're all symptoms Mm -hmm. of the shitty inputs that you described earlier you know i.e shame yeah things like that shame and guilt are like the nastiest things to have in your head right they create all that anxiety fear acceptance issues that you know those reasons that somebody couldn't be as comfortable as you are with yourself right um that's yeah, definitely uh, something that, that everybody's up against. Exactly. And and like you said the word fear, and that always reminds me, like, love has no opposite, but fear is the closest thing. Hmm. Fear stops us from loving, you know, I fear do, of rejection. I do see that, yeah. yeah. Well, we love everybody. Well, we think we, we do. already do. Yeah. We already love everybody. We just force ourselves not to for whatever issue that we have inside of our head that mm-hmm. creates it like we're just now describing yeah all those things you already love your neighbor you already love everybody you just have fear-based shame-based guilt-based reasons that you won't pursue it right and it's just other people's judgment simple as that right it can't be anything else because it's not real <laughs> right what you other people think a sack of, you. of anxiety <laughs> yeah Give me a sack of anxiety and I'll high five you and we can change the entire thought process about what this is. You can't yeah. because it's not real. It's a choice. It's just a choice. It is a choice. It's It scares people when you say that. And a lot of people will take offense to it or they'll use offense as their way not to get better. Right. They'll say, oh, you're oversimplifying my problem. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not. I'm giving you the keys to get out of the fucking box. I'm telling you there's no problem that you don't have a problem. Right. You, you're literally just wearing glasses sitting outside saying you're in a box. Yeah, blinders on. Yeah, that's all it is. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. Yeah. So you're you're a Persian. Yes. Right? I've never, I can't say I've never met a Persian person. Oh, you've met so many uh, of us. <laughs> I probably have. Um, looking back on my life, yeah. I just wouldn't have known. Right. Or probably wouldn't have bothered to ask because it wasn't, didn't come up. Right. If it came up, it came up. If there was a discussion on culture, hey, tell me about right. it. But you're Persian. Mm-hmm. Um, I can tell you the only Persian thing that I knew that I came in contact with was a cat. Um, yes. <laughs> my mom also had a Persian pleasant. Cat. <laughs> yes. Um, so being from Persia, you're here in the U.S. How how was that coming here? Um, what was what was the uh, what brought you to the U.S.? Well, um, so I want to also mention that Persian is also re- referred to as Iranian because the country mm-hmm. now is Iran, but Persians, a lot of us prefer Persian because um, we are referring to the deep, rich um, history of what used to be the Persian Empire and before it was invaded and and all that <laughs> went to ruin. But it also, you know, grew in different ways. Um, so, yeah, I'm from Iran. I was born there and uh, it was it was quite a fantastic place. Um, the culture is 
warm, very similar to the Latin cultures, um, very family oriented and a lot of celebration um, for the most part. I was blessed to be part of a you know upper middle class upbringing. Uh, my dad is, uh, was an architect. My mom had a double master's um, and both educated and um, a little strict, but not on the crazy strict scale that sometimes we see the stereotype of Middle Eastern parents. Considering your line of work, I think you probably have like the chillest Persian parents on the earth, right? Dude, shout out to my parents. Uh, so they, <laughs> were, to be. they were both very musical, which I mean... I, there's tape That's of, a gateway. Yeah, there's tape of me. There's We now converted to digital, but there's tape of me at one and a half year old, you know, Nilu singing and dancing. And my dad was always chasing after me with a microphone and a little tape recorder and um, Nilu sing. And my, you know, my, my sister would demand that I sing on cue. So, I mean, I really couldn't help myself. <laughs> I'm a product. Well, why wouldn't you, though? Because that's <laughs> that's creative expression. That's about as natural as it gets. Right, right. You know, when you, I love music. Music is is huge, a huge, huge part of uh, all of the growth, you know, that I try to to give myself. Music is, has been very intricate to that. It's medicine. Um, yeah. It really is. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't... Um, I didn't grow up having access to, this is going to sound super backwoods, but when you don't have money in your backwoods, you don't, uh, you don't get lyrics. Mm -hmm. um, you, you grow up on the one or two FM stations that play and you form bonds with music in a different way because I don't give who you are. You cannot understand the words to songs until you read them. 99% right. of them. It's fucking hard unless it's like some kind of hype song. Where unless it's a pop song because pop tends yeah. to pronounce the lyrics a lot more clearly. Yeah, but otherwise it's art, you know, and yeah. I made most of my bonds with music as a child through the actual music. Melody. Like, yeah. right. And it's allowed me to, like, when I, when I listen to, like, uh, music from around the world, I always, I like to plug into global viral lists and stuff like that all the time because I don't need to understand what you're saying. <laughs> I really don't. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't in a long time. Like, I, there are songs that I love and, and artists that I love, you know, for what they write. But most of the time, I can just, I just know I like it. I like it. I'll find out after the fact that it was actually some kind of poignant statement. <laughs> Otherwise, um, it's just a cool sound. Yeah. As a, as a lyric writer, <laughs> it's hard to hear that, but I totally get it. Because there have been songs that I've enjoyed without knowing what they said for decades. But here's the difference. Now, at my age now, I am reading the lyrics. Mm -hmm. I am, like you said, with age comes wisdom mm -hmm. and with wisdom comes the ability to reflect mm -hmm. and look back on things that you didn't get throughout your life and what you may have missed out on. And I can tell you um, two things. A, my parents were really good at music mm -hmm. because I love a lot of great lyrics and B, they're just damn good at both. Nice. They, they, it takes a good set of lyrics, but without the lyrics, you, without the music, you don't have anything. You have poetry, yep. which is still beautiful. Yep, absolutely. Welcome, academics, to the study hall. My name is Carl. I'm your study hall monitor, and I just sit right here. Hey, okay, which one of you took my chair? That's not funny. I don't like that. Nilu is a full-time actor, vocalist, and stand-up comic in Los Angeles. Her Persian roots have made her a valuable vocalist in her musical projects, including the international party band 26 Orchestra, as well as her music comedy collective called A Tribe Called Love. Nilu produces a monthly underground comedy show called That's Funny Nilu, and has been lucky enough to perform at a famed comedy stages such as the world-famous Comedy Club in Hollywood and Flappers in Burbank. She's also a vegan, animal rights activist, and rescuer, and has worked as an inspirational speaker and motivator. To follow Nilu on Instagram and Facebook at that's underscore funny underscore Nilu, N-I-L-O-O, -O, and at and a uh, underscore tribe underscore hold underscore love. Now, you have your assignment. I have mine. I have to find my chair. Keep learning. Be cool. Go back to class. The, um, coming from Persia to here, you're a comedian. Um, what about the uh, the documentaries and the films that you've been in recently? Um, you had listed a couple out, and I'm, I'm super curious. Yes. Um, so it just happened that um, I met a documentary filmmaker, um, an award-winning uh, filmmaker, Mr. Mihandust, um, Esmail Mihandust, 
um, through a friend, through another Persian woman um, that I know. And she, you know, messaged me, said he's coming to America to do a screening of his um, other film. And if you could just, you know, like take him out for a coffee or something, just, you know, because you're an awesome person. He's an awesome person. I was like, great. I would love to. So I did. As as hesitant as I was, I did end up doing this. And then as we were talking and I was telling him about my life um, and animal rescue and music and all this stuff, um, he told me that he was working on a documentary and happenstance that there was another name, uh, another person in Iran by the name of Nilu, who also did animal rescue, cat rescue like me. And that wouldn't that be amazing if he, we could tie the stories in together, um, and thus was born. Yeah, the <laughs> the documentary um, Nilu. That's super cool. Nilu Far Betty Puna and them. Um, yeah, so those are some of the 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 people in the documentary, and uh, yeah, so it's amazing because he basically just uh, made a schedule with me, and we we met up. He, I took him to one of my singing gigs with my band um, at the time. Um, which is a wedding gig, which, you know, fantastic. That's another thing I do. <clears throat> and so oh, yeah, you're a wedding singer. I am. I, yeah, I am. Well, weddings yes. and extravagant, like really expensive Persian weddings. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard oh, about yeah. these. That I do know. Yeah. These, I do know that there tends to be India. India does that a lot too. The very extravagant, expensive, right. multi week long weddings. Well, I think ours is maybe one notch down from that in Los Angeles, but yeah, the Persian weddings here in Los Angeles can be quite extravagant and, and actually it's not just, you know, What's the wildest weddings. thing you've seen at a Persian wedding? There were camels. They brought camels. And I was like, what is happening here? Yeah, and I remember one of the camels really was into me <laughs> when I tried to take Camels them. are gross, oh, man. Oh, they are not. They're beautiful, but so they are cute. not friendly. Have you? First of all, these camels were lovely. I'm sure they were beaten into submission, but... Um, oh, yeah, of yeah. course. With their... With their, their you know, their horseshoes on and the spikes into their feet they have the and the reins and everything eyelashes. else. You really should check out a camel's eyelashes next time. <laughs> um, I, I, something tells me if I get close enough to check out a <laughs> the camel's eyelashes, they, that sounds like that sounds like a, a sex euphemism. Whoa. <laughs> check it out. So, look at the camel's eyelashes. <laughs> yeah. Do the camel's eyelashes match the curtains? <laughs> 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 Come here, baby. I'm going to give you the camel's eyelashes. Wow. That sounds like a wrestling move. <laughs> it does. Well, actually, you know, it's funny you said that. When when I heard you make the joke about Beard and Bush, yeah. it made me laugh because I thought that would be a great male and female tag team in the wrestling <laughs> in wrestling back in like the 90s. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> now entering Beard and Bush. And Bush could kind of look like one of the Bushes, like the pres ex-presidents. <laughs> Oh, my God, that would be hysterical. It'd be like a double entendre. <laughs> yeah, and just throwing shoes at everybody and going, <laughs> Wow. I mean, yeah, that's, we're not getting into politics at all. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I remember that because there was a game that came out, like, on the phone for, like, a month that just made me pee my pants. Because oh, it was, like, it was it was George Bush. And, like, he was a cartoon character, and he was throwing a shoe over and over again. You had to hit the button to see if you could hit oh George gosh. Bush, like, with the shoe, and, like, he'd duck. I was like, this is hysterical. Isn't technology <laughs> magical? Your worst moments are, are immemorialized in memes and, like, videos now. It's my it's only goal in life awful. is to not be a meme. Yeah. Crazy. I gotta be a good meme. Right, yeah. I'm, I, I got ahead of the curve by making my own memes. <laughs> Uh, same thing. I'm like, if I just throw myself under the bus yeah. in advance, then I don't have to uh, it just be makes as me vulnerable. Better. Yeah, exactly. Well, I love feeling vulnerable. It's funny because. Well, yeah, I just take the power away from other people. I don't uh -huh. I don't mind feeling vulnerable. I just don't want you. I don't want somebody to force vulnerability upon me. Whoa. No, that's not allowed. It's 2021. <laughs> yeah, me oh, too. yeah. Everything's different now. <laughs> it's funny. I stay at home most of the time. Um and I don't, yeah, I don't watch TV anymore. To. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I think mine was more by choice. The, the <laughs> pandemic just kind of happens out there. Right. Whatever you guys are doing. Um, it, it just, I kind of forgot where I was going with that, but eh, whatever. You said you stay home most of the time. I do. I do stay home most of the time. Um, but It doesn't matter. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I I looked at A Tribe Called Love and a song pumped into my head. So I was looking at the sheet there. Um, so it, I, I started moving my head around. Tribe Called Love. It's the sign behind you. 
Oh, wait. What is yes. that? Let's talk about it. Yes. What is a tribe called love? A tribe called love. It's also on this amazing shirt that my uh, friend, um, DJ and producer King Felix made for me. A tribe called love. Um, a tribe called love was born out of um, really a sense of bringing community together. So I consider it a collective, um, if you want to call it that. It's it's music. That's where it really started. I started doing music under the name of a tribe called love doing conscious lyrics to already known songs. Um, there was a, um, you know, a, a couple songs, like a Sting song and an Olive song from the 90s called You're Not Alone. And um, actually it was a white tease song that first inspired A Tribe Called Love um, music. Um, so the collective is basically music, comedy, community. Um, a lot of what we do is cannabis friendly. So um, our tagline is, you know, comedy, cannabis, community. Um, the the trifecta uh, you, of you've seeds. got an endorsement from the Tragedy Academy. I don't care what anybody says. Awesome. And, yeah, marijuana and cannabis, CBD, the endocannabinoid system, so understudied, and it just it's been completely shattered by big pharma. I'm I'm glad that that you're bringing awareness to something like that because Thank you. I, I know that people across America could benefit so much. Thank you. Especially yeah. from PTSD, yeah. anxiety, depression, all those things. And it's all about, you know, I mean, we have to be adults when we use these substances. I'm not like I'm I'm not saying cannabis is for everyone or should be used by everyone because I've seen people lose their shit on weed and it's not necessary, you know, to, to, to say that. I think we need to be adults about what we do and put in our bodies and we need to know our limits and we need to not abuse things. We need to have um, some sort of level of self-regulation in order to be allowed these gifts and privileges. So um, I, you know, when I see a friend abusing themselves in, the, in such a manner, I'm the first to speak out. Um, and I tell them, you know, maybe you should hold off on <laughs> doing another hit or, you know, taking another whatever. So um, I, it's not that I just promote, you know, unconscious abuse. I got you. You're not you're not running yeah. around with a glow in the dark 420 shirt on saying, let's just do what I, I well, got I mean, you. No, because I know oh, I can you... handle my shit. So I would you'd catch me with a 420 glow in the dark shirt. <laughs> But... I got you. The stigma that goes with it. Yeah, you Which know what I, I mean? I need to talk to somebody about, all right, if you want to legitimize marijuana, stop naming it shit like grape, you know, or naming it like Gorilla Grapes and other <laughs> shit like that, you know? Girl Scout and, cookies. Uh, yeah, Girl Scout cookies and whatever. I'm like, nobody, nobody's going to take that seriously. <laughs> like, you can't do that. It is a playful industry, isn't it? <laughs> it is, but, you know, it's it's changed, changed my life. Right. Um, and I've I've seen so many people grow from just CBD alone. I right. Mean, it's it's such a gateway to getting rid of all those things we were talking about earlier, those yeah. shame, guilt, and other issues. It it brings down the veil. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's a big part of what we do at tri a tribe called Love. But um, so we produce um the comedy show that's funny Nilu. And when I say we, it's me and my partner and whoever else decides um they want to join. But we have, you know, a big roster of comics who we've brought onto our shows. I've, um, we kind of promote conscious comedy so we don't punch down. Um, our comedy mama is at um, Bobby Oliver at the, the Dow Comedy Studio, which is incredible. If you haven't taken a comedy workshop there, um, you should totally do it. She does Zoom classes as well. Bobby Oliver. You should definitely check her out. Um, I, I thank her in, you know, every single one of my pages because... Her brand of comedy is really um, in line with what I wanted to, be, just who I wanted to be in life. Um, and that's somebody who who is kind even when we're b being witty and clever and biting. I don't think there's any need to, to, as she put it, punch down on people who are already having a shit time of this reality. So... So our comedy is more of a punch up situation. So I'm, I'm really grateful. And her book is amazing. The Tao of Comedy. It, it, it's life changing. It's almost like a spirit moved through Bobby and like lightning came out of her fingertips in this book. And you should totally check out her comedy special too on um, Amazon. She fucking kills it. Um, brilliant. What was her name again? Bobby Oliver. So everybody can B O B B I E Oliver. Oliver. Yeah. So um, uh, you know, on on most of my my Instagram and everything, I've I've tagged her on a lot of my comedy stuff. And um, another amazing comic is Sally Mullins. You guys should check her out too. She's phenomenal. These two these two badass women have really set a um beautiful scene for um female comics in Los Angeles. 
they are much. We're gonna have to have a yeah. female comedy podcast. We'll have to have all you in one day and just do like a group podcast. Oh, and, fantastic! And cut it up. I think it'd be a blast. I think so too. I would be more than happy to put you guys in touch because I, these women are, uh, uh, yeah, just mag. Some of the magnificent. some of the most woke conversations I've ever had in my life are are are, are comedians or people that you know have that. That I think in order to be a comedian, you have to have a certain amount of strife anyway, mm -hmm. because it's it comes from suffering. I also think I like that you said punch up. Mm -hmm. um, what I what I think about comedy is that it is the it is one of the best ways to bridge divides because it doesn't call anybody out individually when you're giving a group of people the you know an overarching theme to what you're you're comedically approaching. Um, you can call people out without individually calling them out. Mm -hmm. They can laugh with everybody and then walk away the next day and be like, "Shit, <laughs> um, maybe I sh shouldn't be doing that." Um, and you know, and then they opened the door. Nobody ever told them they were an asshole to their face. Mm -hmm. They just said, Hey, group of people over there, one or two of you is an asshole. Right. We're not gonna tell you who, but everybody's laughing. And if you're not, might be you. Right. You know, but it gives them a chance to correct themselves. For sure. Self correction, yeah, is a is a wonderful opportunity. Um, there are some times, you know, that there's value in directly, um, you know, not in a shaming way, but just directly pointing out someone's uh, you know, behavior in a, in an attempt to just like wake them, like shake them awake. Cause a lot of times we're doing these bad behaviors unconsciously and we're not even aware. And sometimes that immediate, like, Whoa, okay. Yeah. My bad. Like I've had really good responses from people, you know, <laughs> I, I'm not well, always that takes, the best that communicator. That takes a very aware person because, mm -hmm. you know, to take that step, there's not many people that can do that. Mm -hmm. Um, it, when you, when you approach somebody's unknowns um they, they're unaware of i think it's uh called jahari's window or something like that mm -hmm. where it describes like a, a couple of different areas within the mind and it's like what people know about you mm -hmm. and what you know about yourself and then what other people know about you that you don't know about yourself it's like a little venn and diagram like that. Yep. yeah 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 it's a four it's a, it looks like a window yep um but it explains that there are a set of of things that other people know about you yep. that you do not know yep. you are completely unaware and they are aware and you're walking around blind <laughs> and there are times when it requires someone like yourself that can wear kid gloves or wrap it up in a bow and can maybe laugh about it or i tend to use self-deprecation yeah oh, look i've been there mm -hmm. and and things like that that tends to bring down the wall a little bit yeah but you're right yeah you have to you have to that's the only way we change yeah sometimes i use the phrase i wouldn't be your friend if i didn't tell you this you know i preface it with this is really coming from a good place like my intention is pure you know because that tends to soften the blow sometimes you know i i i I'm trying to be your friend right now by telling you this, you know, but this is coming off in such and such way, you know, that that's a, that's a, that's a great way to approach it. Um, we do find, I, I've found, if you found that sometimes that people are not ready to hear it yet. Mm -hmm. Yep. I've had those interactions <laughs> and I try yep. to walk away gracefully, but sometimes it gets pretty heated less and less. So the older I get in my twenties, it was, those confrontations were, were a little bit more heated, but, um, as I've grown, because the stakes were higher. You had pride then. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The ego, ego died a while ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Once the ego is out of play, then yeah. you can kind of just ignore things. Yeah. You can you can pay it attention and mind when it's in the moment, and you don't pay attention to it afterwards. Mm -hmm. It's just pointless. We're the only creature running around here worrying and being depressed, you know, right. about tomorrow and yesterday, tomorrow, yesterday, tomorrow, yesterday. Yeah. Nobody cares about right now. Oh, this I is, love right now. Right now is I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> I didn't know what was going right on. Right now is my favorite moment. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'll take that personally. <laughs> you should totally, you should totally resemble that remark. <laughs> I do. I, I, you know what? Um, I, I, I want to have you back in. I think that, uh, I think that we've had a, a great conversation. You've, you've done tons of cool things. You have so many different backgrounds. I mean, acting and singing and, you know, the comedy is amazing. But, um, one of the things that I want to point out is that, uh, I think that you are a good example of how to live your life how to live it to the fullest. And when I say live, I don't mean like walking in someone's shoes and that following that career or something like that. But I mean to actually not take for granted what we've been given. And that's that, that to me is something that I recognize. And I want to thank you, thank you. personally 
for coming on here. I know we bullshit around and we laugh and all that kind of <laughs> stuff, but um, I'm very picky, um, you know, because I think that when you said that uh, you are the person that tells people, um, you know, from that position of friendship, um, well, I think you're telling people through your actions every day. Thank you so um, much. And I, I, I continue doing that. And please, please come back on the show. I would love to. I would, I'd be yeah, super we excited. have so much to talk about for sure. Uh, you you named like two three hour specials that we have anyway, you know. Um, you said, well, that's yeah. a two hour one. That's a three hour yeah. one. <laughs> exactly. So we'll we'll be back in. I'll, I'm I'll pop over on. a quick list of uh, ideas to you if you want. <laughs> Absolutely. So what do you have coming up? That uh, where can people come see you? Um, do you have any events that are uh, coming up soon? You know, I don't have any in person events yet, but a lot is brewing here at the uh, ATCL studio. Um, uh, we are planning to do some Twitch activity, um, some live. I've been working musically with my partner, um, Mark Corgi. He DJs, and um, we've acquired like this amazing lo-fi slash house set where he DJs and I vocalize over um, instrumentals, um, improvise and, and vocalize. Um, yeah, so yeah, I love that. Yeah, so that's going to be really fun. So I'll keep an eye out on that. It's going to be you know under a, a tribe called Love, of course. Um, uh, I always am really looking forward to working with people with animal rescue, um, for animal rescue reasons. So you can find me on Instagram at, um, Nilu rescues animals. We didn't even talk about your animal rescue. I know that's a whole that's gonna be other a whole topic. Show. Yeah. Cause it really is. And I have to be emotionally prepared for that episode. I no gotta worries. be honest. Well, it doesn't really that's, have to that's be like all that watching, heavy. Uh, all I hear is Sarah McLaughlin in the background <laughs> every time we talk about rescue she's, animals. She changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah McLaughlin I gotta, I gotta step away. Yeah. So she's, so animal rescue is like a whole other topic. That's not because, because we can tell separate veganism and animal rescue but they are interrelated but um i wrote a workshop that i haven't shared with the world yet on the art of animal rescue the art of cat res rescue basically the cat whispering because in my community i'm kind of known as um, one of the resident cat whisperers that takes feral and difficult to, to adopt animals and, and makes them adoptable so um it's very hard that that is hard because I, we fuck the animal up. The animal isn't fucked up. Right. There, there's a complete difference. Like the animal didn't ask to be in this situation. Right. There's a merger so, of nature and nurture for sure. Um, what, with doing rescue and and the whispering involves knowing how to do the physical um, body language along with the integration into you know like regular social human life. <laughs> so yeah, it's, I love it. It's, so we definitely need to do a show about that. Absolutely. I've always had a theory. I love cats. Um, I don't own cats um, well, because I have a you, giant Nobody owns anyone, mastiff. really. No, well, that's what I was going to yeah. say. Cats are the least owned pet because I swear to God, as much as I love them, they will eat your eyes 10 minutes after you die. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't necessarily agree. You'd have to meet my cats. But yeah, I, I, don't, I, try, I try to change the words that I use to describe my relationship with animals, such as, you know, owning or a pet versus an owner i, I try like that. to say i've been trying like, to do that with how i talk about women yeah and not owning thing. yeah like, i mean referring to she yeah. her chick women you there know you it's trying to take away those things yeah because so words it. matter words matter for sure because words unfortunately build, they yeah do. words build civilizations so um you know we can't really move beyond a, a level of consciousness without changing the words so yeah i i tend to you know, try to gently correct people when they say own um, and say, well, you know, you don't really own anyone. That's a slave master relationship. So, yeah, our animal companions are our adopted babies. Um, we don't. Yeah, I, I, I foster quite a bit so we can talk about fostering on a whole other level, too. I, I love it. No, I have my my big bull mastiff. She'll be out here uh, hitting the door. She's uh, she owns us. Yes. Um, <laughs> that's a fact. She drools. She farts like a like a middle aged wow. man. She sits up with her feet out in front of her like a human. It's <laughs> it's all sorts of weird. Stuff. I'll that's send you fantastic. some pictures. It's it's um but yeah she owns us and I I'm I'm okay with being in that subservient role. Right. I pick up her poop. It right. can't be any other way. I don't own my dog. Hey, I chose if, to live a life of service. If you own somebody, <laughs> if you own somebody, would you be picking up their poop? Absolutely not. No. Well, not somebody. I, I, anything. You just <laughs> anybody. That's backwards. They are somebody's, by the way. So you they can are. use that They're... word to describe your dog. You can call him or her a somebody for sure. I, is it wrong to think that they're just us, but in a different round of the uh, on the on the big ball that we call Earth? No, it's not wrong at all. I think I could be a butterfly next time around, and I'm actually intending on being a butterfly. It's my that's intention. What you be. If, that's if, like if that's a, a thing, life. I don't know if that's a thing. I think we just become consciousness. But um, if yeah, if I come back, dude, yeah, if I could, if I could be a butterfly in someone like me's own garden, 
That would be cool because uh, I take care of my butterflies. See, I would I would end up being that butterfly that has to fly from like Mexico to Michigan or whatever the <laughs> hell that thing is. All tired. I'd be pissed off to be a butterfly. Why do we have to mate in Cosmel? Why can't we do it in Michigan? This We're is a whole lot of work for here, nothing. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That would be the butterfly I'd Can't we just have a beer and relax? <laughs> like, why do we gotta flap all the time? That's funny. <laughs> All right. So um, why don't you give everybody your um, your social media profiles, your website, that kind of stuff, so they can look you up. For sure. Um, you can find me on Facebook or Instagram. Um, not really necessarily on TikTok right now. Uh, a Tribe Called Love. And um, you can use, you know, all lowercase or whatever if you want. A Tribe Called Love. And that's funny, Nilu. So no apostrophe in that. All one word. That's funny, Nilu. And it's N-I-L-O-O. Um, yeah, and all those linked to each other. Um, I did write a book, so if you want to check that out, um, you no, can. Please do. Yeah. What was the uh, What was the book that you wrote? It's I'm called, sorry we didn't get to it. No, it's all right. It's called Love Came and Went, and it's a personal, um, it's kind of a creative nonfiction memoir, um, kind of poetry, kind of not, <laughs> poetry kind of not. Um, you, it's, it's a good read. It's intense. Um, a friend of mine wrote a uh, review of it and he said, it, uh, you should read it by firelight, preferably naked and intoxicated. So you can, Oh, well, there you, that's it. <laughs> Hold on a minute. I thought we were getting like, we were going the other direction. Like I was going to get sad. I'm like now all of a sudden I'm like, you know, Hey babe, you want me to, uh, read you a chapter you from the beard and bush? <laughs> you want me to do the beard and bush? <laughs> oh yeah. You should totally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. I gotta get out of here before I get in trouble. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for, for coming in, Nilu. And uh, make sure you check her out. That was uh, That's Funny Nilu and A Tribe Called Love on uh, Instagram, Facebook. And uh, remember, everybody, be cool and keep learning. Hey, academics. Thanks for attending another class at the Tragedy Academy. You can show us some love by rating us five stars on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. On Amazon Alexa, ask to listen to the Tragedy Academy podcast. Please visit our website at thetragedyacademy.com where you'll find past interviews and blogs on our homepage and sign up for our newsletter, Spam with Extra Great. We're on Facebook at The Tragedy Academy Podcast, on Twitter at Tragedy underscore Academy, and on Instagram at The Tragedy Academy 2019, where we'll post recent shows, blog entries, and thoughts. Submit creative work and funny stories to us at our website or on social media. Thanks again for coming to class, and remember, be cool and keep learning. Thank mm-hmm. you.